you guys always greatly honor me whenever you click on one of these videos. And today's video is very, very special. And that is because it is a clip off a long form piece of content that is now live on my Patreon. So you guys have been asking me, Joseph, we want 30 minute plus videos. You can find that exclusively on my Patreon. So if you want to support me, if you want to support the work that I do, and uh, you want exclusive content that you're not going to find anywhere else on some of the subjects that you guys love, then uh, consider supporting the channel and I'll see you over there. But if not, here's the clip anyway. In view of the richness of the semen in lecithin, cholesterol, phosphorus, and other constitutes of nervous and brain tissue, it is clear that it is incontinence or loss of these valuable nerve nourishing substances by which promoting undernutrition is responsible for the disturbed functioning of the nervous system and the brain and is never truly continence contrary to the unscientific views of the psychoanalysts. One of the strongest points in my personal opinion scientific grounds for abstinence or celibacy is that your sexual fluid is very very rich in vitamins and minerals and everything needed for nervous function. There's actually a strong correlation between seminal fluid, which is the fluid in which you know, the semen kind of moves through and is lubricated when going through procreation, and uh, the continuity between that and your cerebral spinal fluid, your CSF. And this is a conducer for the electrical current. So you can imagine, if you take like a wire, right? You know the wire has rubber around it. That's to conduce the electrical current to make it go quicker. In the same way, that's what the CSF is for. And that's the same kind of fluid which you lose if you go through, you know, if, if you're addicted to pornography, if you are uh, addicted to this kind of very promiscuous uh, lifestyle, if you're seeing prostitutes and risking venereal diseases as well. And it is not unsurprising if your nervous system is uninsulated to find that there is a reduction in your cognitive functions, in your focus, in your mood, in everything that is related to how you function nervously. This is not a stretch of the imagination whatsoever to say that. We have seen that the internal secretions of the sex glands stand at the basis of the individual's physical and mental vitality, and that sex hormones are present in the external as well as the internal secretions of the gonads. Many of the effects attributed to such hormones, as we have seen, are due to the physiological effect of reabsorbed semen. Conservation of semen means conservation of sex hormones and increased vigor, while loss of semen means loss of the hormones and diminished vitality. Also, chronic deficiency of such hormones leads to the symptoms of senility, which Vornoff and uh, Stienanch strove to overcome by increasing the amount of sex hormones in the blood. So becoming senile, that word of becoming senile is, is seen as a correlation by these two individuals there of loss of their sexual hormones, their sexual fluid. And it is not unsurprising or a stretch of the imagination to say, if you are constantly having to replenish your sexual fluids, you have to remember that you're taking from your organs, you're taking from your blood, you're taking from your bones, you're taking from your muscles if the body needs to replace it in terms of creating another human being, it's going to take from the cells that you already have because that is replication. That is, what is the word reproduction? What does the word reproduction mean? It means to reproduce that which you already have, right? So it's going to take from all these precious things that you have in and of yourself. So you, you weaken yourself in a way if you have to constantly replenish these fluids. And if you're becoming mentally weak, if you're becoming senile, if you're developing cognitive disorders, dementia, things like that, I, I really don't think there's a stretch of the imagination to say that this is related to you being oversexed in this way. The semen is a viscid albionous fluid, alkaline in reaction, which is very rich in calcium and phosphorus, also lecithin cholesterol, albumin, uh, nucleoproteins, iron, vitamin E, etc. In the ejaculation of a normal man, about 226 million spermatozoa are given off. These are rich in phosphorized fats, lecithin, cholesterol, some of the aforementioned things we have, uh, we have discussed already. And that's a really important point to mention there that it's, phosphor it's phosphorized fat. Fat is an essential nutrient for cognitive function. Your gray matter, your brain is actually 60% DHA. And it, it's not of a stretch of imagination to say that your brain is a big ball of fat. 
and it needs fat in order to function to a higher level. So if you're constantly oversexed in this manner, then you're going to notice that you have a diminishment in your cognitive capacities, memory, uh, higher cognitive function, higher executive function. An ounce of semen is considered to be the equivalent in value to 60 ounces of blood, which uh, it, it constitutes an exact of some of the most valuable constitutions as far as its vitalizing power is concerned. Dr. Friedrich McCann can remark on this point and he is quoted saying, from what has been stated it must be admitted that the spermatic fluid does possess potentialities justifying the belief of ancient writers concerning its vital properties. The semen contains substances of high physiological value especially in relation to nutrition of the brain and nervous system. If reabsorption of semen through the wall of the female uh, genital tract has vitalizing effect on the female organism, the, sh the same should be the case in the body of the male in which it is conserved. So look, we have evidence. We have evidence of if you're pursuing a traditional relationship with your wife or your girlfriend and you are having unprotected sex, she is absorbing, she is absorbing the vital nutrients of your sexual fluids whenever you're having traditional intercourse. And it is recorded having a vitalizing effect. So conversely, why wouldn't it be the same if we were continent with this kind of sexual fluid? 